Damn! Yeah! Woo! What a day! Golly, thank you, Elon. All hail Elon! <laughs> What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of Attack once again, and today I have yet another talking head video. Yep, and today we're going to be talking about should you mine cryptocurrency on your laptop. But before we get into that, if you guys want to chat with other crypto enthusiasts as well as cryptocurrency miners, M I N E R S, yeah, I saw you dirty peeps. In the comments i need to turn that stuff off anyways so if you are looking to make sure you go ahead and click the join button down below the channel the 199 level will unlock the hidden registration link for rocket chat rocket chat is a self-hosted chat application that we run for, of course, the Suns, which are, of course, y'all, the community. And we have it behind that paywall to essentially block all the spammers and scammers and that sort of thing because the bots haven't quite figured that out yet. If they do, we also still have more control over it to get rid of it. Feel free to cancel the membership if you can't afford it. Uh, uh, that doesn't bother me. This is just a way for us to kind of make sure that everybody that is in the chat is invested in some form or fashion and we have a lot of good guys there that have a wealth of information and are sharing it freely so thanks everybody that's already in the rocket chat you guys have been awesome i love it the push notifications are working on mobile we have a dark mode it has a desktop application as well as of course a mobile application for you to access it on and it works very well so there you go now let's talk about mining cryptocurrency on the laptop and i want to just say hold on wait until we talk about it before you start going and watching the how to mine ethereum video and clicking through everything first of all we need to talk about the cryptocurrencies that are you know profitable to mine currently and the biggest one that everybody wants to mine is, of course, Ethereum, the big daddy of mineable coins, at least until, of course, we have the proof of stake move with ETH 2.0. But the big deal here is going to be mentioning that it has what's called a DAG, and that's just basically short for a data set. And that data set is growing and now it's grown above four gigabytes. And the thing is when you're mining, you're mining with the graphics card usually. And especially on a laptop, you'll be mining with a graphics card. If your graphics card does not have enough available video memory to load the entire DAG into it, you will not be able to mine it. So go ahead and figure out what GPU is in your laptop and Google that and then figure out how much video memory, also short is VRAM, before you go ahead and even waste your time trying to mine it. There are other mineable coins. I would suggest using the one that I talked about for mining on a gaming laptop, if anything, which is Vertcoin, because Verthash is a little bit more friendly as far as usability on desktops, which is why I talk about using that on gaming systems, especially if you're like just browsing the web or something along those lines. It's a lot better if you're able to just go ahead and be able to utilize your PC if that's what it's meant for with vert coin and not ethereum because that's going to use ethereum basically uses up a lot more resources but there's also some other issues when we get into talking about mining with laptops of course this video idea came from everybody buying up basically rtx 30 series laptops and mining on them this is more being done in china apparently as well and there's these pictures of just a whole bunch of laptops gaming laptops lined up mining and if that's your goal i guess cool if all you're doing is mining on them whatever it's super profitable but if it's your primary system you need to take some things into account primarily heat and possible damage to the unit so whenever you're mining cryptocurrency it's typically a process that you're going to leave running 
the entire time you're not using the computer. So in this case, if you had Windows 10, you would probably turn your power options to not go to sleep, that sort of thing. And then you would just be cranking away. And what that does is basically utilize 100% of your GPU the entire time. And the problem with laptops is they don't dissipate heat the same way that a physical GPU that goes into a desktop does. They typically don't have the cooling capacity that a desktop has, and therefore they get hot quicker. This is also why if you have tried mining on a laptop, you'll notice that let's say you have an RTX 3060 Ti in that laptop, it's probably only getting like 40 to 45 mega hash a second. And when you go look at charts, you're like, well, all these guys are getting 60 mega hash a second. What's happening there is that your memory modules are actually getting too hot. So the computer is throttling it down. And when it throttles it down, the memory isn't working at a higher speed, which means you get less of a hash rate. What that also means is that the memory is getting very, very hot. And so the computer is saying, hey, it's putting a limit in there and it's called thermal throttling. And thermal throttling will basically take the speed of the memory and the GPU core down so that it doesn't burn up. And that's one thing. So. The good news is you can mine on a laptop and be fairly certain that your system should be able to kick in and say, hey, it's getting too hot and self-adjust. In some cases though, it might not be able to detect that across the board. And the reason for that is basically the, the temperature sensors in the laptop aren't necessarily on all components of the graphics card. And when we're talking about memory modules, it's quite common for you to just have one temperature sensor on a single memory slot or memory module and not on the rest. If you've ever taken a look at me breaking down a graphics card and showing you guys where to put thermal pads on, it's the same idea in, of course, a laptop, you have individual memory modules. So in a typical eight gigabyte GPU, you'll have eight memory modules with only one temperature sensor, if any, on any one of those. So depending on how the laptop is built and build construction, as well as how many temperature sensors were put in, it could not be sensing a single memory module that is actually way higher in temperature than another one. Usually the graphics card will be able to detect this and throttle itself down, but that's not always the case. Like I said, this comes down to build quality and so on. And you have AI, different partners building different versions of the board and so on. So if you have a specific hotspot that's not getting read properly or the software messes up and the system doesn't down clock, you can burn up the memory modules in your laptop. And at that point, because it's a laptop, what happens? Basically the entire system for most laptops is dead. You're not gonna be able to function with it anymore. It's gonna burn up and you don't have an option to replace the graphics card. If you're on a desktop, at least if you did mess up or something along those lines or the software misreports and it does overheat, you can just replace a single component in the desktop and you're okay. With a laptop, you have to replace the entire system, which is why I put a hefty warning on mining with a laptop because no matter how you cut that cookie, you're out, you know, in the case of the 3000 series laptops, you're out two to, I don't know, go to six, seven grand, depending on how many GPUs you got and everything else. And in a lot of cases, you aren't gonna be able to replace individual parts in that laptop. There are some laptops that you can, and you can do the research yourself and figure out what those are. But even if you are looking at a laptop where you can replace the graphics, portion only, you're going to be spending a hefty amount of cash and you probably don't want to be risking burning it up or even burning up any of the components. Additionally, if you have a surge or anything like that coming from the graphics card, you can damage other components of that laptop that would make it even more difficult to repair. Actual portions that connect the graphics, unit, graphics card to the motherboard, for example. Okay, so we've talked about the physical ramifications and hardware being damaged with mining on a laptop, but let's talk about the security ramifications of mining on a laptop. Now, I have come out, of course, with a couple videos for some workarounds with this, such as a bootable USB drive that you load Linux on, that you reboot the system to, and I 
prefer that with gaming rigs, I suggest that in most cases you use something like Hive OS or Simple Mining, something along those lines. Reboot the system and boot to the USB drive to kind of keep at least your Windows install separate to an extent from, of course, those your miner. And the reason for that is because miners typically require you to add in exclusions in Windows for them to basically run. That's because most of them are considered malware. Now, most miners aren't malware, but because they are flagged as malware and you are required to go ahead and add an exclusion, the there is the the ability for someone to put something malicious into the miner and you have already added an, added an exclusion to it that basically means that it can run free. You have to worry about things like key loggers taking advantage of basically anything you type in, including passwords. You have to worry about crypto not cryptocurrency, but when people actually lock all your files behind a paywall and then ask for cryptocurrency, ironically enough. And you have to worry about just somebody having remote access to your PC and being able to do whatever they want. There are a lot of risks when you add exclusions in Windows 10, which is why I usually suggest dual booting into something that's already built for mining like Hive OS or something along those lines, even on a gaming rig. So those are the two big reasons I don't suggest mining on a laptop. Of course, that is because my assumption is you're using your laptop as well. So if you ever have like a miner set up where you're not that worried about viruses, things you want to take into account is never logging into Windows with it. Basically with any accounts like Windows accounts, you want to set up a private account you don't want to log into any of your financial information on those rigs, so on and so forth, to at least protect yourself. But that means that at that point, that miner isn't really going to be functioning as a daily driver, which also means, of course, that laptop would not function as a daily driver. Additionally, if you're gonna dual boot, I recommend making sure that you have a TPM module, which I have one here. And if you don't have it built into your motherboard, most laptops do, but if you don't, you can get a little module like this. And then you can use it to at least enable BitLocker on your machine, and that's for desktops. And then basically encrypt the drive so that when you're dual booted into the other version, basically into the Hive OS or whatever Linux distro you're using to mine, at least they won't be able to as easily access the drives that have Windows and any personal information on it. So that's kind of just a couple tips there. Now, if you are going to mine on a laptop, you are going to want to take into account, of course, the power settings and making sure it's not going to go to sleep because then it'll stop mining. You want to take into account some sort of heat dissipation, whether it's one of those laptop coolers or like a lot of people do, they set them up basically like a tent. And at that point, maybe put a fan on it and blow on it with some air. And then, like I said, use a mining OS and dual boot into it with something like Hive OS off of a USB drive. These are some basics that you can take into account to prevent any kind of damage to the laptop or security risks. It's still kind of not that great, right? It, it's, it's not going to be an easy thing to do. It has a high risk and your ROI is super high too. So let's say you were just gonna buy a bunch of laptops to mine on. Well, if you're spending $2,000 or more on a laptop, your return on investment's gonna be super low. And as more and more people start to do that, of course, that's gonna drive up the price for the laptops. I would suggest not doing it at all, but like I said, there's some tips if you are going to do it on what you can maybe take into account. Now, if you're just gonna mine on it while you're there and kind of having it access to it and so on, check out my video on mining vertcoin. It's not as profitable, but it is still profitable and leaves the system very much functional compared to 
even nice hash running Ethereum in the background. Also, you have control over the algo and when it's mining and what it's mining and so on and so forth. So that's kind of my thoughts on mining with a laptop. I'd like to hear what you guys think in the comment section below. I would be amiss, I guess, if I didn't mention mining, of course, Monero, which Monero would probably be another option along with Vertcoin where it, that runs on the CPU. Of course, it's not highly profitable, but you are getting some use out of it. There are also, of course, crypto jackers in web pages that are probably already running it if you are too loose with your web page security. But we can talk about that in another video if you're interesting on <laughs> browser jacking with cryptocurrency or crypto jacking, because that's a fun topic as well. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. We're doing videos every day and so tune back in, make sure you hit the sub and the like button so you can come and check in on what the latest cryptocurrency content I am talking about is, or tech, I like tech as well. We've covered lots of tech. And I will see you next Tuesday.